was in the office of a guy who helps people build healthy soils, and he asked if I wanted to look at some through a microscope. Of course I did. Eyes to the eyepieces, a twiddle of the focus knob, and it came alive with much jostling amidst the autumnal colours. A roundish blob went speeding across my field of view. I let out an involuntary gasp. <gasps> I wanted to follow it, but I didn't know how. And the rest, as they say, is history. I'm an eco-social worker and science communicator. I love soil microbes and all the wonderful things they do for us, whether it be growing healthy plants, regenerating our soils, or entertaining me with their delightful antics. If you've never heard of microbes before, you're not alone. They are so small that you can't see them with the naked eye. And let's face it, it's pretty difficult to be passionate or even interested in something that you can't see. But by the end of my story today, I hope that perhaps you'll be willing to share a little about the importance of microbes with others. I pinch myself that I can share my passion and show people how microbes can impact in everyone's lives. Soil without microbes is just dirt. And soil does so much more than holding plants up while they grow. We face environmental, economic, social and health challenges that can all be traced back to degraded soils. The National Soil Advocate Major General Michael Jeffrey discussed soils and the role of soil in human health, climate change, and surprisingly to me, national security. The mention of microbes peppered throughout various com uh, conversations left me wanting to know more. I said about exploring. Microbes are so small that they are invisible to the naked eye. And yet they're all around, inside and out. If you think about us, then about 10% of our cells are human. The other 90% are microbial. And of the ones that are in our guts, about a third of those also live in the soil. What does that say about our diet? That we do indeed eat dirt? And if that's not weird enough, then on a small suburban block like mine, there's the roughly the equivalent in microbial biomass of several kangaroos living underground. There are more microbes in a teaspoon of healthy soil than there are people living on this earth. Let me repeat, more microbes in a teaspoon of soil than people living on earth. I learned that in the 1980s, Dr. Elaine Ingham was part of a team that discovered that plants growing in soil containing bacteria, fungi, protozoa, and nematodes thrived when compared to soils, plants growing in soil that lacked even one of those organisms. Who loves nematodes? Some of you haven't heard of nematodes? Well, nematodes are similar to earthworms, but they're a lot, lot smaller and they can wiggle a lot. Nematodes have different mouthpieces depending on what they like to eat. Some like bacteria, some like fungi, some like other nematodes, and some like the occasional root. You might have been on the receiving end of nematodes when they destroyed your tomato crops. But rest assured, most nematodes are beneficial and doing wonderful things in your soil. I learnt that healthy plants, carbon sequestration and good soil structure are directly related to the quality of the food we eat, the air we breathe and the water we drink. And they're all directly dependent on you guessed it, soil microbes. When soil is alive with microbes, its structure is characterised by these 
coarsely shaped, crumbly, carbon-rich aggregates that keep it fluffy and make it capable of absorbing and releasing water like a sponge. The levels of carbon are significant because one gram of carbon can hold roughly eight grams of water. Mm. I wonder what that means for us. How much water can our soils hold? What might that, that's yours and mine. What that might, might that mean for our summer watering regime or our next water bill? Microbes play a key role in building those carbon-rich aggregates. The bacteria ooze a gooey slime that glues together the smallest of soil particles to make them into brick-like clumps. And fungi grow long, sticky strands that act like mortar to tie those bricks together. So we end up with the bricks and mortar of the underground. We might think of these as being homes for microbes, safe places, places where they can vary the temperature or control the airflow. And without these bacterially built bricks or the fungally formed mortar, soil structure is poor and compaction is common. Without these, we can end up with dust bowls, sorry, without the, the microbes, we can end up with dust bowls clogging our lungs and rivers running brown as the topsoil is washed downstream. Is your soil structure fit for purpose? Are there lots of places, carbon-rich spaces, to hold water, nutrients? Talking of nutrients, we have our stomachs inside of us to digest our food, to provide our nutrients. But I learned that plants, plants outsource their stomachs to the soil. The soil is their stomach. Bacteria and fungi collect the nutrients and hold them in their bodies, a bit like bags of fertilizer. Now we all know that bags of fertilizer are fine, but not much good to the plants when they're in the shed. We need a way to get the nutrients to the plants. A bit like fertilizer spreaders, protozoa, single-celled organisms, and nematodes, some of the world's smallest animals work like, like, like spreaders in that they eat the bacteria and fungi, keeping the nutrients that they need for themselves, for their own well-being, and excreting the rest in a plant-available form. They're clever spreaders, though, in that the nutrients excreted in this way enhance the flavour of the food and the nutrient density of the food and make the plants inedible to pests and resistant to disease. Our soils are broken because we've decimated populations of these nutrient cycling, aggregate building microbes through our agricultural and, and gardening practices. I love soil microbes. Should you? Could you care about microbes? If you think of them as being the willing, powerful workers in your soil that protect the plants from pest and disease, allowing them to flourish and saving you money in the process, it's likely you'll want to get to know them better. David Attenborough says that no one will protect what they don't care about and no one will care about what they've never experienced. Most people have never experienced or seen their own soil microbes. And if we are to protect and care for microbes in order to regenerate our soils, we need opportunities to get to see our own. We need to be talking to our kids about microbes and soil health. We need to be encouraging our children to care for our soils in order to protect them for their future and of many generations to come. 
our jostling, wiggly, sticky, hairy, bustling soil microbes that are too small to be seen with the naked eye, that have a weighty presence in our soil and are so plentiful to be almost beyond counting, keep us alive and living in a wonderful world. Be audacious. Make opportunities to get to see your own. And when you get to welcome these tiny underground strangers, listen out for your gasp of delight. Thank you.